The live stream code and rating administration has rated this online event PG. All ages admitted, please be kind and stay on topic. This live stream is sponsored by Friendly TV. With over 40 channels, many of them showing your favorite classic TV shows, Friendly TV is the low-cost streaming service for those of us who remember when television was truly special. I've added a link to Friendly TV in the description section of this video. When you use it to try it out free for seven days, you will also be supporting this channel. Good evening and welcome to The Good Stuff Live. My name is Dave Sundstrom. And you know, it has been a while since I've done one of these live streams and I am super excited tonight to be able to hang out with all of you. So let's see, I've got my Good Stuff t-shirt and I've got my Diet Coke. So yeah, I think I'm ready for action. Let's see who is out there hanging out with me in the chat. So let's take a peek. We've got My Name is Unavailable, who says WrestleMania 3, Hogan versus Andre the Giant changed the landscape of pro wrestling forever. The most important match in history. You know, I saw those two battle in Salt Lake City, Utah, in the Salt Palace in, during the early 80s. I don't think it was 1987. It was earlier than that. Kenneth Wilkinson, welcome to the live stream, as well as Antonio Rodriguez. It is delightful to have you here. Channel member Sean Innes hanging out with us, saying hello to everyone. Danny Staten, welcome. Good to have you here with us as well. And hey, look at that. There's Deborah Battle. Boy, these are names that are familiar to me. Adrian James, welcome. Channel member Emily Miller, hopefully you're back now that it's 8 p.m. Eastern time. The Chance Bartels, the Nostalgic Pod Blast says, Good evening, Chance in Atlanta, Georgia, the Nostalgic Pod Blast checking in. Chance is a great YouTube creator. Check out his live streams when you get a chance. And Justin Aylett, channel member Justin Aylett, I should say, also known as Braidwood Inn, another fantastic YouTube creator doing all sorts of videos about Three's Company, the Golden Girls. I think we're going to get together. He's invited me to come on and visit about Three's Company in the not-too-distant future on his channel. Looking forward to that. Channel member Zuperplex is here as well. Uh, let's see. Chance says, Kirstie Alley joining Cheers and Victoria Principal's Pam Ewing leaving Dallas in a fiery crash where my TV highlights of 1987 we will talk about TV highlights in a bit. Let's see who else is here. Oh, Deborah Battle says, one of my favorite years. One year out of high school and watching too much TV. Can you ever watch too much TV, Deborah? I think not. <laughs> when I got home from my first real job. Yeah, that was right around the time of my first real job as well. Let's see. Oh, and Chance points out that 1987 was the fictional year that Captain William Buck Rogers left Earth, Earth to be frozen solid. And I can still hear William Conrad's voice in my head saying, the year is 1987. Lots of conversation about poor Pam Ewing on Dallas. Lamont Bradford's here. Welcome. Good to have you here. He also talks about WrestleMania three saying that uh, Randy the Macho Man Savage versus what was Steamboat's full name? I can't remember. Uh, I don't remember that match. Sounds like I should go back and watch it since it was the greatest wrestling match ever. Thanks for sharing that, Lamont, and welcome to the live stream tonight. Let's see who else we have. Oh, channel member Angela McArdle is here with us. She says, truck. I'm sure I missed something from Angela earlier. There we are. Hello, all. Just saw this. I'm sitting down here waiting for a tow truck. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. That means something not great happened today. I hope things get better for you, Angela. Johnny Burnett is here. Always a treat to have John hang out with us. Welcome, John, as 
is Mark Davis who asks, what happened to the Happy Days live stream? We will get back to that at some point in the not too distant future, Mark. Thanks for reminding me. Marianne Lockwood's here. Good to have you with us, Marianne. Channel member Angela McArdle says, watching on my phone, waiting for a tow truck. Dang car died on the way home. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. Let's see. James Bodnerchuk is hanging out with us tonight. Good to have you here, James. Thanks for hanging out. Karen Lester is here as well. Welcome, Karen. And to all the folks that are saying hi to me or to anyone else, hello. Good to have you with us as we talk about 1987, Raja 1938. What the heck? I love having the live stream back as well. I got to tell you, my life has been hectic and full of chaos the last little bit. And as such, these uh, live streams haven't been as frequent, but I certainly do miss them and hope to be able to do more in the future. Carolyn Harmon, welcome to the live stream as well. Movies Tube U0675. Shouting out from California, shouting out from Kaysville, Utah, right back at you, my friend. Channel member Dominic D, welcome. Good to have you here. Bigelow.65 says, hey, Dave, or hi, Dave. Haven't been here in a while, too. Well, welcome back. Always good to have you with us. Hopefully, I don't miss anybody. I see Chris Budarakos. So I hope I'm glad to catch his, who says, he says, A O O A. Uh, hmm. Okay, Chris. <laughs> Keith Risk is here as well. He says, oh, oh, you know who is here. I don't. If I said hi to Dominic D, channel member Dominic D, if I haven't, I'm doing it now. Hey, buddy, how's it going? Good to have you with us. Just working through the list here. Terrell Eugene Bellinger, welcome to the live stream. Always good to have your knowledge and insight uh, for an hour or so as we talk about 1987. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Yes. Appetite for Destruction was one of the standout albums of 1987. There was another, too, I'll mention in just a little bit, or at least I'll share in the form of a video. Let's see what else we got here. Oh, good. Emily's back. Welcome, Emily. Good to have you with us. Two Beer says Married with Children was my fave from 87. Did it come out in 87? I think you might be right. Show was very different than what we were used to seeing in terms of a sitcom, right? Uh, <laughs> Chance says, thanks, Dave, for this stream for the freeloaders like me. Hey, I'm going to be giving out uh, some channel memberships tonight. So who knows? I'm told that the way this YouTube randomly, I say, give out five and YouTube randomly gives them out. And I think some of it's based on engagement. I know you're highly engaged chance. You never know. You might have a chance of getting a channel membership and hanging out with us uh, over on the exclusive channel member live streams and uh, getting early access to the videos and all that fun stuff. Laura Smith is here. She says was in 87. The year that the next generation premiered, I think it might have been 87 or 88. I know that it wasn't 86, so 87 or 88, and I think it was 87. Look at this Angela McArdle is using her timeline membership uh, message post, and sh she says, Wow, time flies. She's been a member of the channel for 11 months. Thank you, Angela, for your support. Truly appreciated. Krisnena says, hello, first time on your live. Well, hello and welcome to the live stream. Tonight we're going to be talking about 1987. We've got a few surprises for you, a few commercials, giving out some channel memberships. It's just going to be a good time. We're going to run from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern time. Locally here in Kaysville, Utah, that's 6 to 7 p.m. Ace Arcadia, hello, good to have you with us. Chris Nina says, did you ever watch Mr. Belvedere? Of course I watched Mr. Bel Belvedere. How could I not watch that show? A standout sitcom from the era. Lots of fun. Thanks for asking. Joshua Stanborough. Oh, hey, hey, Josh, I was just talking about you today. I was telling my wife about your book. This is noted author Josh Stanborough. And I had the opportunity over the course of the last year or so to work with Josh 
uh, in, a, in the financial services arena. And he is just, what a fantastic individual Josh is. I was telling my wife about how if you ever had a question, uh, Josh was the guy to that would be there to provide an answer, a real subject matter expert. Thanks for joining, Josh. Good to see you and definitely miss you. Let's see. Julie Evans is here. Welcome, Julie. Good to have you here tonight on the live stream. And Johnny Burnett says, Fox Network debut, 1987 on Sunday night, then three months later on Saturday night. Yeah, I think that's, of course, when we saw Married with Children for the first time. We saw the Tracy Ullman show, a bunch of really great shows, uh, many of them trailblazing. And I absolutely believe that 87 was the year that we got Star Trek The Next Generation as well. Yep, The Simpsons debuted on the Tracy Ullman show, says Raja 1938. Absolutely correct. Let's see. Another timeline message from Sean Innes, who says, someone always has to remind me to do this. Thanks, Angela. Sean has been a channel member for 16 months. Wow. Sean, my how time flies, my friend. Thanks for your support. And, you know, as a former industry insider, uh, it's always great to uh, read your comments on my videos. And, you know, I learn a lot from you. So thanks for being around, hanging out with us. Sakina McMurrin, welcome to the live stream. Always great to have you here. And another milestone message. I think that's what they're called. Milestone message is this one from channel member Emily Miller. 23 months. We're almost to a two-year anniversary. Emily, thanks for all your support. She says, ooh, I can do this too. Yay me. Yes, yay you. No need to blush, Josh. You are fantastic and a true asset to uh, the firm. I think I can say it to Wells Fargo where uh, I was working over the past year. Uh, the Nostalgic Pod Blast confirms what we've been talking about. On Monday, September 28th, 1987 was when Star Trek The Next Generation premiered in U.S. syndicated television. Yeah. It is great to be back and be live again. And look at this. Mike Davis, one of my Brothers from another mother, uh, you know, I just love this guy. I love everything about him. And it's fun when he pops into a live stream, has a just, you know, a great individual. Track him down on Facebook. You'll see what I'm talking about. Bigelow.65 says, absolutely. Married with Children was definitely not the sitcom that could have everything works out in 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not everything did work out in 30 minutes on Married with Children. That's what I loved about it. Uh, and this Chance Bartels, the nostalgic pot blast, says, however, I recall it being a Sunday night when The Next Generation debuted. I recall it a Saturday in my neck of the woods, but that's the thing with syndication. It could be, it could be different in different parts of the country. All right, let's see what else. Have I missed anybody? Manly Stranger. Hey, good to have you here. And I think I've said hello to Julie, but I'll say, I'll read her comment, which is glad to be here most of the time. I miss your live streams because I'm almost always working when you have these live streams. Well, it is awesome to have you with us tonight, Julie. Okay. Ace Arcadia says, I was nine in 1987. I think Unsolved Mysteries debuted that year. The intro music sticks with you. It really does. A little earworm, isn't it? Look at this. My buddy, Crazy Joe from Crazy Joe Adventures, another really fantastic YouTube creator. I, uh, folks, he, there's another channel you need to go track down and subscribe to. Crazy Joe is just a, a ton of, uh, well, if you love the good stuff, you love you'll love Crazy Joe stuff. Look at this, Joshua Stanborough gifted five memberships. Wow, Josh, that's too kind of you. Uh, now I've got to see who got those memberships. Let's see. Hang on one second. Um trying to see i'm going to okay i guess i have to click a button here josh thanks for this this is nice this is fun i'm going to go ahead and click the button allow gifts click that and 
Let's see if that works. Now, I think I need to, let's see if we can't give those memberships out, Josh. I'm going to do that right now. Membership gifting. I'm going to give five of them right now. All right, let's see who gets those memberships. We've got Lisa A, Ralphie Duran, Street 9, Omega 579, and Patty M. Fantastic. That is awesome. Super excited to see those individuals get channel memberships. All right. Let's do this. I'm going to play a video and then we'll come back and we'll talk about uh, 1987 in terms of TV shows, music, and movies. So let me go ahead and do a little button clicking here. And uh, this will get us going in terms of uh, really kind of getting the conversation going on. 
The Friendly TV streaming service recently added MeTV to their channel lineup. They didn't stop there. They've also got Heroes and Icons, better known as H&I. Right now, Friendly TV has nine channels that are dedicated to playing classic TV shows and movies 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And you know what? There's more on the way. The really cool thing is that between all of these channels, it's pretty darn easy to find most of the TV shows that we all loved when we were growing up. And we are back. So I saw some comments about that song and Jimmy Osmond. And Justin, how can you not know who Jimmy Osmond was? Even if you weren't familiar with his music. I mean, he's part of a legendary musical family. But uh, uh, that song was not a hit. As a matter of fact, I don't know if that song got any airplay. But I'm actually quite fond of the song. It's very eight has a very 80s feel to it. And when I came across it, I thought to myself, you know what? I'm going to make sure I have it available to share on live streams and such. Because one, YouTube's not going to throw out, throw up a copyright flag because the song's unknown. And two, because it's, I like it. I think it's great. I'm a big fan of the Osmonds, though, going all the way back to the Osmond Brothers and songs like Crazy Horses. All right. Again, thank you to Josh Stambro for gifting five memberships to the channel we'll give out five more directly from me later on so uh let's see and thank you to josh for becoming a channel member being a super friend of the channel thank you so much josh appreciate it very very much again it is so good to hear from you and thanks for popping in to my live stream tonight uh, let's read a few more comments. Uh, Mike, channel member Mike D. I don't know if I've said hello to channel member Mike D yet. Uh, he says, I will take the pop and rock from the 70s and 80s above anything from the past 30 years, as will I. Let's see. And Justin says the song was a little bit like Don Jones Johnson's heartbeat. Yeah. <laughs> and Sakina says, I had big hair back then. And channel member Emily Miller says, that's some white boy dancing right there. I love it. Dolph Quick, uh, welcome to the live stream, says, last time I heard from Jimmy Osmond, he was recovering from an illness. Hope he's doing okay. I, it's public knowledge, so I'll share it as well. Uh, he had a stroke, and he is recovering, but it was a pretty uh, massive stroke, and he I'm not sure if he's uh, able to perform anymore, but uh, he is recovering, and that is the operative word there. Hey, look at this. Uh, my pal Steve Tevis from over on the Life and Sad Ending channel. Hello to you, Steve. Always a big fan of your work, folks. He's one of the original old guard YouTubers and uh, just a really wonderful creator and always good to have him you know on board and hanging out with us on the live streams as it is with crazy Joe and who I'm with you the new monkeys live still in our hearts he's had a couple of them yes on his channel I need to go back and find those live streams slash videos whatever they are because uh, I did see an interview over on uh, the pop culture retro pop cast with Jonathan Rosen and Ike Eisenman where they had one of the new monkeys on uh, but just he had great stories to tell and how much fun is that to have to be able to visit with those guys who really were trying to take advantage of the resurgence in the monkeys craze that happened during the mid 80s 86 87 somewhere around there I think MTV started playing the old monkeys uh, TV show from the uh, late 60s, and, uh, you know, it, all of a sudden, the band had new fans, legions of new fans. All right, let's see what else we got going on here. Well, first off, I, let's talk a little bit about TV shows. So I posted a poll, and I listed the top Four television shows from 1987. And the order, by the way, of those top four, I believe Cosby was number one, A Different World was number two, Cheers was number three, and Golden Girls, The Golden Girls was number four. Right now, I asked you guys to tell me which one was your favorite. 
And it's interesting, Cosby and A Different World really, they apparently don't hold up. Now, there's a lot going on with Bill Cosby and his show and that legacy, so I can see where that might cause some folks to uh, have a little trepidation in expressing that as their favorite show these days. But uh, we've got cheers at 47%. we got 91 votes, so fairly sizable sum of voters. Uh, cheers at 47%, followed by the Golden Girls at 21%, then the Cosby Show at 19%. And finally, a different world at 13%. So keep voting if you haven't voted. Uh, love to see, uh, you know, I, I, it seems to me like cheers is a lock. And I'm going to play a video, whatever the is the winner tonight. I'll play a video at the very end about that show. So let's see what else we've got going on here. Let's do this. Let's talk about TV shows. So I'm going to scroll through and see, since we'll talk about TV shows first. Uh, oh, James Bodnichuk says, some people say you can't go back in time. Well, Dave Sundstrom proves otherwise. Thanks, James. And Keith said that song made his ears hurt. <laughs> Another milestone message this time from David Kerbo, a channel member for over a year now, 13 months. He just says, whooped. Great to have you as a channel member. And uh, I really do appreciate your support, David. Let's see. I said we we're going to talk about TV, but I got to, yeah. Crazy Horses is just a fantastic Osmond song. If you haven't heard it, if you don't know what I'm talking about, pull it up in Spotify or YouTube Music. Give it a listen. You know what's really fun is over on YouTube, there's these videos where people listen to the songs and then the reaction, their reaction videos, right? And there's a ton of reaction videos for Crazy Horses. It's a song. Well, let's, let's just put it this way. The music isn't what you would expect. It truly is, as Lisa says, as channel member Lisa A says, uh, heavy metal. I, there are uh, musicians really famous guitarists like Steve Stevens, Billy uh, Idol's guitarist, who swear by that song. It's one of their favorite songs. All right. So let's talk about TV shows. We've talked a little bit about them tonight, but uh, I see a lot of conversation about Jimmy Osmond now. Uh, let's see. Hill Street Blues, says Johnny Burnett, ended in... It's run on, night, on NBC in 1987 and then later ran in syndication. Yeah, yeah. Great show, one of my favorites. I'm going to look for more TV comments here as I kind of scroll through. Keith says he was never invited on the love boat. How rude, how rude. Channel member Mike D says, I was into Night Court, as was I, and that fall, Beauty and the Beast. What a great show that was, right? With Linda Hav Hamilton. Let's see. Okay. Terrell Eugene Bellinger says, a different world started out focusing on Denise Huxtable, but once Lisa Bonet left, it pretty much became more of an ensemble show with the legendary Debbie Allen at the helm. Yes, I've done a video on uh, Lisa Bonet and a different world and why she ultimately left that show and returned to the Cosby show and then was fired from that show. Check it out if you get a chance. Marianne Lockwood says, Bill Cosby's issues hit me hard. Never would have thought, nor would I have. And Dominic D, channel member Dominic D, says, the original monkeys were great. Channel member Emily Miller says, how anybody can choose cheers over the Golden Girls is beyond me. Well, almost half of you have. Chris Nana says, I was seven in 1987, so I was very into Mr. Belvedere. Uh, Missy Gold was on that show, and uh, I, I'm trying to think of the name of the actor. Christopher something or other played Mr. Belvedere. Really fun show, and I enjoyed it a lot as well. Justin Aylett, a.k.a. Braidwood in channel member, says, Taking Cosby's later actions out of the equation, I liked his 1970 show better. He was a gym teacher, I think. I remember that show as well. I think it was pretty fun 
also. Lamont Bradford says, A Different World didn't get good until the second season on. It's one of those shows that I think got better as time went on. I'm going to agree with you on that. Tam Tamara, Tamara Zachary says, I never watched an entire episode of Cheers. I just could never get into that show. I really enjoyed Cheers, uh, particularly during the Diane years, but I thought Kirstie Alley did a great job coming in as Rebecca during those later seasons as well. Julie Evans says, the Golden Girls, those women always crack me up when I watch that show. Uh, let's see. What else do we have here? Rhymes with Orange, welcome to the live stream, says, I was in Long Beach today and saw the spot that the love boat was docked. How cool is that? Awesome. Oh, another great Osmond song, Down by the Lazy River. Sakina McMurrin says, Married with Children, Golden Girls, Cheers, and A Different World. Cosby and St. Elsewhere, Elsewhere were my favorites back then. And then Terrell Eugene Bellinger says, Full House started out slow but got better in season two with the addition of Lori Laughlin as Becky. The Four Doorman says, I find Dave's voice soothing in his videos. It's a nice way to wind down after a busy day while reliving awesome 70s and 80s memories. You know, I have family members that tell me my voice is soothing as well. As a matter of fact, they like to listen to my videos to go to sleep. They say it puts them to sleep. <laughs> I think Headbangers Ball was during the late 80s. I'm not sure if it was 87, though. Channel member Dominic D says L.A. Law was a big hit in 1987. Let's take a look at the top-rated TV shows in the U.S. during 1987. Let me go ahead and share my screen here if I can. And... Let's see if you guys can see this. I'm going to go ahead and expand that out so you can maybe see that list a little better. All right. We've got The Cosby Show at number one, A Different World at number two, Cheers at number three, The Golden Girls at number four, and those are all NBC shows. And then finally, a couple ABC shows, Growing Pains and Who the who's the boss in the five, fifth and sixth place. Another NBC show in Night Court at seven. Then 60 Minutes. I, it doesn't matter what year you look at these ratings. 60 Minutes is always in the top 10. It's amazing to me how dominant that news program has been over the past few decades. In the number nine spot is Jessica Fletcher. Murder, She Wrote. Angela Lansbury, great in that show. And number two. 10 looks like it's a tie between Alf on NBC and the Wonder Years over on ABC. And there's LA Law tied for the 11th slash 12th spot with Moonlighting. So, and then another one of my favorite shows at 14, Matlock with Andy Griffith. All right. And let's go over and let's look at top movies for the year as well. I'm going to zoom in on that so we can see this. This is 1987. Domestic box office movies. Number one that year. Why are we not seeing that? Hang on a second. We're still seeing the TV stuff, huh? Okay. Let me do this. There we go. Number one, Beverly Hills Cop 2. Number two, Platoon. Number three, Fatal Attraction. Number four, The Untouchables. Number five, Three Men and a Baby. Number six, The Secret of My Success. Number seven, Stakeout. Number eight, Lethal Weapon. Number nine, The Witches of Eastwick. And ten, Predator. Now, in that video that I did earlier, I used some information that I got out of Google, and they said RoboCop was a 1987 hit. Oh, there it is at number 14. I don't know if that uh, would be considered one of the top movies. I guess it is if it's in the top 20 or so. 
I really enjoyed uh, Dan Aykroyd and Tom Hanks in Dragnet. I don't know how you guys felt about that movie, but uh, that was one of my favorites. And then if I were to look at this list and identify a favorite film, it's actually probably going to be the secret of my success. I'm just a huge Michael J. Fox fan and love his work and, and really enjoyed that movie. And uh, a great soundtrack album as well with uh, the single The Secret of My Success by Night Ranger. Let's look at the Billboard hits for that year. Uh, we'll talk, look at the top 10. We've got number one, Walk Like an Egyptian. Number two, Alone. Number three, Shake You Down. Okay, so Walk Like a, an Egyptian, I don't think I need to say. It's the Bengals. Alone was Heart, another fantastic hit by that band. Shake You Down was Gregory Abbott. Number four, it looks like it's a tie. No, it's just a, a long title. I Want to Dance with Somebody, Whitney Houston. Number five, Nothing's Going to Stop Us Now, Starship. Number six, Say La Vie, Robbie Neville. Anyone remember that song? Fun song. White Snakes, Here I Go Again. At seven, The Way It Is, Bruce Hornsby in the Range. At eight, Shake Down by Bob Seger at nine. And then probably my favorite song from this list, from the top 10 list, at number 10, Living on a Prayer, Bon Jovi. Okay, let me go ahead and stop sharing this screen. And uh, here's what we're going to do. We're going to watch some commercials. And then I'm going to give away some more channel memberships. And then I'm going to read a whole bunch of comments. And then we're going to watch a video. Looks like right now it's going to be a cheers-based video, but we'll see. And uh, we're going to call it a night in just a little bit. But uh, more to come. Lots more to come. But first, these messages. And now, this message. That's who. There's a super party animal. His name is Buzz McKenzie. Buzz McKenzie ooh. When the sun shines bright on a cold but night, he's in a party frenzy. He's Buzz McKenzie, the posh pooch of pop culture. Goes, Buzz, go. Buzz, you're an animal. Go, go, Buzz, go, go. Hard nosed Mrs. Hatcher. Talk fast, you can't get. Today we'll be reading chapters three, four. Five. You can never win her over. Thanks, Judith. I'll do this. Mrs. Hatcher had no pets. Forget the excuses, there's no way to reach her. My homework flew out the bus window. I didn't do it. Our only break was a substitute teacher. In Mrs. Hatcher's absence, there will be no tests. <laughs> when things got wrong, I'll never get it. She made us stick to it. She pushed I got it. and pushed. I knew you could do it. This is a DLT fries and cocoa from your third grade class. Hi, now it's It's been a year since we met you. And what we wanted to say is... We'll never forget you. All right, we're back. Oh, I love those McDonald's commercials from the 80s. They just, who, whatever marketing agency they employed back then, it, that, was, that was a match made in heaven, and they did just such a great job. All right, let's give out, uh, let's give out five more channel memberships. Hang on one second here. Membership gifting. Let me do this. Click a button and let's see who else is going to be a new channel member. Oh, this is so exciting. Let's see who it is. Rhymes with Orange. Bud Davis. The Salixar. Jennifer Knight 18 and Justin Graves, congratulations and welcome to channel membership. It's great to have you on board. For those folks that didn't get a channel membership tonight, hey, uh, it's very economical. I don't charge a lot for channel membership and I'd love to have you on board. And certainly uh, it's a great way to show your support for the channel. Okay, so we've done the commercials. We've done 
the channel memberships we've given away. Well, Joshua gave away five. I've given away five tonight. And uh, we're just going to hang out and read some comments for the next little bit. And then we will, depending on how the poll ends up, we'll watch a video. I suspect it's going to be a Cheers video at this point. All right, Karen Lester says, congrats. Oh, Tam Tamara Zachary says, hit the thumbs up button for Dave. Please do. That would be highly appreciated. Channel member Emily Miller says, congrats to Dave's lucky five part two. Yes, indeed. Ace Arcadia says, congrats. 66 Kimball Kimble says, I started my career at the post office in 1987, and I'm still there. Whoa. Thank you for helping keep the mail delivered. Appreciate you. Channel member Dominic D says, congratulations to all new channel members. Kenneth Wilkinson says, good evening specifically to Patricia. Laura Smith says, congratulations. Patricia Moganam says, I, I probably mispronounced that. I'm sorry, Patricia. Moonlighting was a great show. Julie Evans says, hey, it's Bud McKenzie. Remember him and those McDonald's commercials from the 80s were very good. They sure were. Danny Staten is, he's got a bone to pick with YouTube in their uh, random delivery of the channel membership. Says, been here years and never won a membership. I don't know how it works, Danny. <laughs> uh, let's see. Movies Tube U0675 says, did that McDonald's commercial get me all teary eyed? It got me all teary eyed every time I watch that thing. Hard nosed Mrs. Hatcher. Channel member Emily Miller says, 66 Kimball. I can't stay with anything that long. That's why I'm on my third marriage. Zuperplex says, Dear Dave, how is the teaching profession going? Uh, that is related to my, so I talked a little bit about hanging out with Josh over the last year. I came on to Wells Fargo. I knew it was going to be short term. I did it for a year. Uh, my career, my career for almost three decades was in financial services. And when I started looking at short term, but full time options, uh, financial services beckoned again. And that was great for me to be able to meet Josh and, uh, and, and a bunch of great people over at, at that firm, Wells Fargo. Uh, but I am currently uh, teaching in the evenings. I teach over at a technical college, uh, the business program, and I'm really enjoying it. So thanks for asking, Zuper. It's, it's a lot of fun. Terrell Eugene Bellinger says, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the original animated series, debuted in 1987 as a five-episode miniseries. Sakina says, I have been saying for years that you have a soothing voice, Dave. <laughs> oh, let's see what else here. Ace Arcadia says, some top cartoons of 1987, TMNT, DuckTales, DuckTales, great cartoon, and Transformers. Dolph Quick says, I love McDonald's fries, as do I, Dolph. I, they're my favorite fries, and uh, uh, I'll tell you. They're not good for you. Chris Nana says, love all your videos. Been a supporter for a few years now. Keep up the great work. Thank you so much. I appreciate the kind words. CJ Piper, Piper says, every once in a while I think of the honeycomb jingle. The come to the honeycomb hideout, that one. Uh, that was a great one. Marty McFly says, so glad, Dave. Keep up the good work for all of us old folks. Uh Emily Miller, channel member Emily Miller says, I would rather teach teenagers than adults. You know, the good thing about teaching at a technical college is I get the, the gamut, right? I have some older teenagers as well as uh, adults that are in their 50s and sometimes even 60s. I am indeed enjoying the learning profession. Chance says the McDonald's French fries were better in 1987 when they were made with trans beef fat. I knew there was a reason I loved those. All right. Kind of a lull in the conversation. I could go back up and look at 
Let me make sure I, I didn't miss any milestone messages, did I? No, I did not. All right. Just to get the conversation going a bit. Hey, tell me what your favorite movie from 1987 was. I'd love to hear. You know mine was Secret of, Secret of My Success. What was your favorite movie? Laura Smith is in agreement with Chance. Uh, she says, yes, absolutely, Beef Tallow. <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah. The, uh, the eggnog shakes. And, of course, just recently they had their shamrock shake again, which was delightful. Okay, so here we're getting some, we're getting some favorite movies from 1987. Uh, Zuperplex can't remember, but Sakina remembers the Dirty Dancing was a top hit. Uh, Ace Arcadia says The Lost Boys. Channel member Mike D says The Lost Boys. And Josh, channel member Josh Stanborough says The Only Answer, I believe, referring to The Lost Boys. Great movie, by the way. Really great movie. At least channel member Lisa A says some kind of wonderful. Oh, and channel member Josh Dambro says Princess Bride. Uh, one of my all-time favorite movies. I absolutely love that. Uh, the story, the movie, the actors, everything about it. Dolph Quick says Robocop. Marianne Lockwood says Moonstruck. Jump Shot 1973, Lost Boys. Terrell has more than one. Terrell Eugene Bellinger, a.k.a. Teb, says favorite movies of 1987, Dirty Dancing, Some Kind of Wonderful, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, The Princess Bride, Robocop, The Lost Boys, and Three Men and a Baby. Channel member Emily Miller says Lost Boys. Uh, let's see. Hmm, which film won the Oscar for Best Picture? That's a really good question, Zuper. We might have to look that one up. Uh, let's see. Channel member Dominic D says, I saw Stakeout was on the list. I barely remember that one. I think Richard Dreyfus and Emily Estevez, Emilio Estevez, were in it. That is correct. Those were the stars. Uh, I think Rosie O'Donnell was in the sequel along with them. <laughs> Batteries Not Included was 1987. I love that movie. It was a great movie, wasn't it? Uh, Chance says, Robocop was intense in the movie theater, ED209. I'd buy that for a dollar. Same monthly price for a membership. Larry Moore says, The Lost Boys, Who's That Girl, Can't Buy Me Love. Oh, Can't Buy Me Love was, that's a fun little comedy. Channel member David Kerbo says, Princess Bride and The Secret of My Success. Channel member Julie Evans says, I love The Lost Boys. I thought that grandfather stole the movie with his old fart shelf. Oh, he was so good in that, wasn't it? Wasn't he? Channel member Emily Miller. I don't I I don't even you gotta watch it. You just gotta watch that movie. It's so good. So good. Uh Let's see, House of Games. I don't remember that one at all, Justin. I'll have to, I will have to do some research on that one. Chris Bedroka says, don't put Dave in the corner or baby. Uh, Jump Shot 1973 says, Nightmare on Elm Street. Was that an 87 movie? I love the first three. All the way through Dream Warriors. A. James says, Full Metal Jacket. Karen Lester says Princess Bride and Dirty Dancing. Laura Smith says she's seen Princess Bride. It is a great movie. The Nostalgic Pod Blast, a.k.a. Chance Bartill, says Empire of the Sun was released in 87. A forgotten Spielberg picture for sure. Larry Moore says uh, Platoon was the best picture that year. That makes sense. Uh, Channel member Zuperplex says Full Metal Jacket was 87. I can't remember. Did I read that? I think I did. I think it was on the list. Channel member Emily Miller says Elm Street and Batteries Not Included are both 87. Now I can't choose. Boy, I don't know. I think I'd probably go Elm Street just because that, you know, it's the first Wes Craven, first in the series, right? Wes Craven directed, and I'm a big fan of his work, and uh, Robert Englund was fantastic. Johnny Depp was in that movie. How can you? How can you go wrong? Channel member Zuperplex says Platoon was good. 
Channel member Lisa A asks if Trick or Treat came in in eighty came out in eighty seven or was it earlier? I don't know. Let's find out. Trick or Treat. It was well. It says it's a two thousand seven movie, but I know there was an earlier version of the film. Nineteen eighty six was when that came out. Uh, let's see. Harry and the Henderson says Jump Shot nineteen seventy three. Was that an eighty seven movie? That was fun. It was a good movie. The Princess Bride has some romance. It has some comedy. But no, it's not a rom-com. Don't you worry. Don't you worry about that, Emily Miller. Channel member Zuperplex says, well, it's got to be Full Metal Jacket for me. Channel member Mike D points out the Trick or Treat was 86. Tamara, Zachary, two of you? I, I, I never would have guessed that we'd have anybody on the stream that hadn't seen The Princess Bride. Ah, channel member Dominic D says the original Night Nightmare on Elm Street was 1984, and that feels right. It feels like it was earlier than 87. Uh, yeah, half-form fun storming the castle. I say that all the time still. I, or the... Uh, He's just mostly dead line is the, I just love that. And, you know, just the cast, including Andre the Giant. There was conversation about his uh, incredible WrestleMania three matchup with Hulk Hogan, but he was so wonderful in The Princess Bride. Let's see. Nostalgic Podblast says Vietnam movies were the Hollywood trend by 87 after the space movie craze past Star Wars, post Star Wars. Even James Bond went into outer space in 79. Yeah, and Moonraker. Jump Shot 1973 says Coming to America. Larry Moore talking about fave TV shows from the year Growing Pains, Who's the Boss, Night Court, and The Wonder Years were all better than the four shows on your poll at that point, in my opinion. You know what? Uh, I don't disagree that those are all great shows. And uh, yeah, I, for example, Night Court's probably of all of those shows is my favorite. And I, I thought The Wonder Years had a special place in my heart too. But I was just going with the top four in terms of Nielsen ratings. Channel member Mike D says The Lost Last Emperor won best pick. So I think it depends on what you look at in terms of was it in 87 – uh, an 86 film that won the Academy Award in day 87, and it, it gets a little confusing. Deborah Battle says Princess Bride was Robin Wright's first big movie. That's the first place I remember seeing her. Uh, Nostalgic Pod Blast points out that Coming to America was actually 88. Julie Evans says that Nightmare on Elm Street 4 was in 87. So, wow, I, would, I thought Dream Warriors, which was three, was later than that. Really? I gotta look that up on Elm Street. Yeah, nineteen eighty-seven film for Nightmare on Elm Street: Three Dream Warriors. At least that's what Google says. Hey, Melissa, good to have you here. You're gonna probably have to catch most of it on the replay. We're uh, pretty much wrapping things up here. I've got to check though. I've got to find out which one won the. <laughs> uh, the poll I have to unfortunately StreamYard doesn't tell me I have to go peek over on YouTube to find out I suspect it is Cheers let's find out let's see what our winner is tonight yeah 43% of the vote with 122 votes Cheers is our big winner tonight. Folks, I want to tell you, it's been great. I don't get a chance to do these very often anymore. Uh, you know, it's been pointed out by uh, some of the channel members that I uh, have been doing some evening teaching over at a local technical college. So I just don't get this opportunity as much as I, I once did. I'm still committed to doing two live streams for my channel members. So if you miss me, <laughs> that's one way to to definitely uh, still get your live stream fix. But thanks so much for hanging out with me tonight. A reminder about Friendly TV that sponsored the live stream tonight. You know, for just a few bucks a month, over 40 channels, many of them focusing on nostalgic television. 
it is my favorite streaming service. If you haven't tried it out, you can try it free for seven days. I've posted a link that if you use, it's in the description section. If you use that one, you'll be supporting the channel. And uh, that's uh, another way to support the work that I do here on YouTube. But thank you so much for joining me tonight. Let me see if I can get that YouTube or that uh, Cheers video up and running here. But before I do that, you know, I got to bring Fred on uh, to tell all of you how I feel about uh, uh, how I feel about each one of you having a hard time speaking, getting all verklempt. You are special. Indeed you are. All right. How about we do a video, a cheers video, but, uh, you know, maybe not one of the main actors. Let's go with George Went, everybody's favorite. You know, Norm. Here we go. Have a nice night, folks. Take care. Just one look at this guy, and it all starts to make sense. It's not surprising that Cheers showrunner James Burroughs said that actor George Went made lives miserable during the making of that classic TV show. So how did he do it? Well, give me just a few minutes and I promise to share all. But first, let's talk just a little bit about Cheers. Fun fact, the show wasn't an immediate hit. The ratings for the first season of the program were nothing to write home about. And if I remember things correctly, there was some concern regarding whether or not the show would be renewed for a second season. On Cheers, Ted Danson played Sam Malone, a retired baseball player who is the main bartender for a warm and inviting bar in Boston where everybody knows your name. Like all great television shows, the entire cast is incredibly good. They're all wonderful, in fact. But I've got to admit that the romantic tension between Sam and waitress Diane Chambers, played by Shelley Long, really made this show something special and so much darn fun to watch. I've published another video about actress Shelley Long. I'll post a link to that video at the end of this one. But it's time. Let's talk about how George Went foisted misery upon many of the folks working on the show. I first learned about this while visiting one of my favorite websites, Showbiz Cheat Sheet. It was there where I stumbled across this article, which references an interview with James Burroughs on the Smartless podcast where he talked about George Went at length. Recalling the very first appearance of Norm, Burroughs said that Sam asked Norm, what do you know? And Norm said, not enough. Now this was never written as a joke, but because of the person saying it and how he looked, it all gelled together and became just this huge laugh, and it made the writers' lives miserable because they now felt obligated to come up with a new normism every single time he wandered into the bar. Here's an example of a classic normism. In fact, this is one of my favorites. Here's another one, classic norm. And as I read this, I can hear both Woody and Norm in my head. On the podcast, Burroughs' credits went with making Norm so darn beloved as a character. He said it was the winning combination of great writing and the perfect actor. Here's a direct quote. He said, we took a great part, put a great actor in it, and it took off. You know, as long as we're talking about George Went, here are a few other things that are definitely worth knowing. Along with Ted Danson and Ray Perlman, George is one of only three actors to appear in all 273 episodes of Cheers. Additionally, George played Norm Peterson on seven different TV shows. Cheers, St. Elsewhere, The Tortellis, The Simpsons, Wings, Frasier, and Family Guy. And lastly, George is the maternal uncle of former Saturday Night Live cast member Jason Sudeikis. It was George who encouraged Jason to try out for Saturday Night Live. And of course, he's gone on to have massive success with the Apple TV Plus television series Ted Lasso, which is a great show that just has so much heart. Kind of like Cheers in that way. In fact, kind of like George too. 
So what do you think? Were you a fan of Cheers? And if so, did you have a favorite normism? Let me know in the comments section, and I would also appreciate it if you clicked on that little thumbs up icon. Maybe even considered subscribing to the channel. I talk about music, movies, and mostly TV from decades gone by. You know, the good stuff. But most importantly, and as always, thank you so much for watching.